this application here called uHaiku, where users can come up with a haiku and then share it with others. So here's the one I just added, and everything looks correct except for the time I added it. It's currently October 28th in my time zone. Now Rails defaults all times to UTC, or universal time, which is why this isn't matching my current time. Now if we visit the application config file for this app, we can see there's a commented out config option for setting the time zone, and without this set, it's defaulting to UTC. So what different time zone options can we pass in here? Well, we can get a list of different time zones by running this rake task, time zones all. So this list is pretty extensive, but it's nicely split up with the different UTC offsets. Now you can also pass in time zones local, and this will look up your local uh, system time and uh, show you the different time zones that are available at that offset. Now it's a good idea to use a time zone where the majority of your users are located. I'm just going to stick with the central time here. Now even though I'm on the Pacific time zone, another tip is that in development you might want to use a time zone that's different from your local machine, so that way you can more easily detect uh, time zone bugs. Now when I restart my Rails app and reload this page, all times will be presented in that time zone. So this is working great, but it still might not match the user's time zone. It would be nice if the user had some way to change their time zone. Now I already have some user authentication in place here and I'm signed in as a user and I can edit a profile here to change my name and password. It would be nice if I could change the time zone assigned to my account as well. To do this, I'll generate a new migration to add a time zone to the user's table, and that'll just be called a time zone with a string column. And then I'll run that migration. Now since I added a column to the table, I'm also going to update the user model in this adder accessible line. I'll add that time zone attribute so that way it can be set through mass assignment through the form. Now while I'm here, I'm also going to add a validation for this attribute. It looks something like this where I call validates inclusion of to make sure that the time zone is one of uh, Rails' available uh, time zones. So this will just uh, ensure that it's a valid time zone. Next, I need to add this to the form for the user. So I'll just copy and paste an existing field here and it's called time zone. And there's a helper method that Rails provides called time zone select, which will do just what we want to provide a select menu for choosing various time zones. Now reloading this page, and there's our select menu where we can choose various time zones. Now if most of your customers are in a specific region, you might want to prioritize that at the top of the menu, and you can do so by passing in a second argument. For example, if they're in the US, there's an active support time zone method called US zones, which will turn, return an array of those time zones. So now if I reload this page, I have US time zones at the top. So I'll set this to Pacific time and update this. And our times are still being displayed in central time zone, so we need to apply that user selection. A good way to do this is through a filter in the application controller, so it'll apply to every action. I'm going to make this an around filter and I'll explain why a little bit later. Let's call it user time zone, and let's only do this if we have a current user. So I'll define this as a private method called user time zone. And there's a method on the time class that Active Support adds called a use zone, which I can pass the current user's time zone to. And this expects a block to be passed in, and so the time zone will be used for the duration of that block. So I can pass the block in that's used in the around filter, so this way it'll set it back to the original time zone when the request is done. Now if we used a before filter instead here, then the time zone will leak through to other requests, so it's important to use an around filter like this. Okay, so if I reload this page, now our time is correctly set to the Pacific time zone. Now Rails makes working with time zones pretty easy, but it's a good idea to understand how it works so you can avoid gotchas. Let me show you some things here in the Rails console. First I'll grab the last haiku, and there's an attribute on here called published at, which is the time I'm displaying to the user on that page. And this looks correct, it's showing the central time here. However, this is not the time that's actually stored in the database. If I call published at before typecast, I can see what time is actually within the database, and it is uh, October 29th at 11 minutes in. So that is actually the UTC time. So this means behind the scenes, Rails is converting the time to UTC whenever it writes or reads from the database, which is a good thing. So that way we have a consistent time zone that's stored in our data. 
Now let's say I want to fetch the current time. A common way to do this is by calling time.now, and this returns the time of the current system, which is at negative 700 offset, or the Pacific time zone. But if I want to grab the time in the zone of my Rails application, I need to call time.zone.now. So this will use the configured central time zone, which is probably what you want. Now you might also notice that the output of these look different, and that's because they're different classes. One's a time class, and another one is active support time with zone. So this works very similar to the time class, but it has added support for time zones. So uh, one way to convert from one to the other is to call in time zone on a time class, and that will convert it to the time with zone class. Now another thing to watch out for is dates. Calling date.today will use the local system's time zone, which is probably not what you want. Instead, you can call date.current to use the Rails configured time zone. Now, they happen to be the same date here, but uh, you know you go to a conference or something or change your time zone, and then suddenly all your tests fail because you were using date.today. Now, it's easy to mix these up, so you might want to always go through time.zone.now, and you can convert this to a date if that's what you need. In short, if you want to avoid time zone headaches in the future in a Rails app, always go through time.zone. Most of the time class methods are supported here, so you can use a parse, for example, to parse a date, and that should work. There we go. So this is in the proper configured central time zone, and notice it handled daylight savings time for that as well. Glad I don't have to mess with that. Now, in addition to time.zone, you can also use the convenient methods that Active Support gives you, such as a weeks ago, and that will convert it to using the proper time zone. Now, if you want some help detecting time zone issues in your Rails app, check out the Zone B gem. This can set the time zone to a random one each time you run your tests. TimeCop is another handy gem, which is useful when working with times in your test suite. Check out episode 276 for more information on that. And one more tip before I finish up, there are certainly better ways to handle time zones than what I presented here. Uh, one option is to use relative time, so you could say five minutes ago instead of displaying the exact time. And also you might want to use a JavaScript for automatically detecting the user's time zone so they don't have to submit it through the form. And that's all I have for this episode on time zones. Thanks for watching.